Look at there. Um, it's going to talk about food for a moment. Um, so, um, we'll have um, the, the support crew will provide us with um, all the food we need on the event. Um, including things like fruit, uh, scroggin, scroggins, that mix of nuts and seeds and chocolate and all sorts of good stuff that gives you a lot of energy on the event um, and also all the water. Um, I know in past years we've had something like 2,000 litres of water across this event. Um, we'll also be provided with our breakfasts, which we'll have at Gin Divine. Um, lunches will be some sort of pre-packed sandwiches, um, frittatas, whatever cool stuff Lauren's able to source from local suppliers. Um, we'll confirm about dinner arrangements at Gin Divine as well. So the first night we will cover that for the celebration. Um, that's um, user pays um, for the celebratory event uh, and also breakfast the following morning. So just make sure you've got your, your card or some cash with you for that. Um, and briefly mentioned fundraising, that, that can be a tricky thing. Um, we've talked a little bit about this on uh, some of the training events as well. Um, there's some really good fundraising ideas on the, um, on the website. So um, take advantage of some of those ideas. Talk to me, talk to Loz about um, other material that you think could be useful for you and we'll see what we can source. Um, so we're, we're more than happy to help you out with that. Um, social media is your friend. Um, I've known people to just do a massive, massive bulk email to everyone they've ever emailed before in their lives and get all their fundraising in one day. So um, people are always amazed that you're doing an event like this and it's something that a lot of people won't take on. So they're happy to pay for you to do it. Um, so, yeah, talk that up a bit. Um, is my thing. Um, training. Uh, people know I'm um, pretty big on the training. Um, I go to every event that I can. I missed one this weekend because we had two on the same day. Um, however, I'm there every week. Um, it's as much of a challenge as the event itself, but it's about getting you ready for the event. Um, the more training you do, the better you, you will be prepared for the event itself. Um, this year we've produced a what I think is a fantastic training guide. Um, it has all of the information I think you need to be able to train. So if you're not coming to our, um, our the organised hikes, then I'm hoping by now you're doing something very similar to those um, on the weekend or midweek if that suits you better and that you're um, also finding every opportunity to walk everywhere and go upstairs and walk up escalators instead of just standing on them and all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you haven't already, have a look at the training guide. That, I think, will give you a lot of good advice about being prepared for the event. Um, please don't rely only on going to the gym or only on riding a bike. There, that you use very different muscles for those. Although I will point out that the step trainer in the gym is fantastic for training for uh, Kosciuszko because it's a very similar um, routine you'll be doing using your arms with your poles and walking up that hill. So, um, yeah, a, a mix of, a, of these things is good, but you can't be going out and hiking. Um, you've been, By now, you would have been getting information coming from um, Lauren on a regular basis, at least once a week. She's sending things out. Um, the website has um, that personal dashboard for you that has all sorts of goodies on there. Um, we've reopened the Facebook page again this year for those who use Facebook, and, and we are posting on that. If you don't use it, you're not missing out because we're getting in touch with you in other ways. Um, I certainly like to use WhatsApp group um, for uh, training comms because I just find that's a little bit more immediate on the day. Um, as well, um, we'll make these slides available to you as well um, or for anyone you know who missed this. Um, if you want to, if there's enough of you, I'll do one of these again as well. Um, we might also need to get in touch with you. 
um, at some point. So we might be ringing you individuals at certain times as well. We've got your details for that. Um, all right, so that's kind of me. Um, I'm going to open it up to any questions that anyone has. And no questions, a bad one. I've got a question. Hi, Chris. That's hi. Louise. Yeah, hello. Um, how how cold has it got up there? Have you have you had like full snow? I don't know. Like what? Yeah, give us mm. I, I guess a, a kind of rough bracket for that time of year of what's what's usual temperatures. If that's all right. Yeah, um, a couple of years ago, um, we certainly did get almost a blizzard and I see Graham's on the call. He, he still made it to the summit in that one. Um, we only got 15 out of 80 people to the summit. The conditions were so bad. Um, it won't be too bad for us this year because um, on Kosciuszko, when in the normal event, we, we're starting a lot later. So we aim to get to the summit at um, at sunset. And once the sun sets is when the temperature just really drops. Um, so last year, all of the water in my water bladder froze. Um, so not just the stuff in, in the tube, but the whole bladder was frozen at the summit. Um, I'm not anticipating that if the weather's good. If the weather's bad, it could get just a little bit below zero still. Um, hence why um, we talk about layering and and, um, and and having this the uh, fleeces and things like that. Um, I actually use my wet weather gear um, just as a wind stop as well, so it can get a bit um, a bit breezy. Um, so I might throw my wet weather gear on simply to um, just cut wind down. But yeah, I, I'm anticipating it'll be about um, this at the time of year we're going around four or five degrees C on the summit of Cozzy and kind of similar for the bulk of the second day. Thank you. Others. Uh, well, while people are thinking of other questions, I, I just want to mention um, the coming weekend hike. Um, this weekend we've planned a double header um, and that's deliberate, but uh, I'd encourage you if you can to come to both Saturday and Sunday's hike. So you, you, because you won't want to do Sunday because you'll be feeling tired from Saturday and that's exactly how you'll feel on the event. So if you're able to free yourself up to do both um, days, that would be great. Um, they're, they're not overly long days um, so uh, you, you should be able to get home after lunch-ish both days however um, Sandra who I see is on the call uh, and I were talking last night um, what we're going to offer is on Saturday there's a walk um, that heads out from um, around uh, North Ride train station and does a big loop around uh, Lane Cove River that's a lovely walk that I only tested out um, this year for the first time, about 19 kilometres. Um, you kind of loop back to the car. Um, so we should be done by about midday on that one. And then on Sunday, you've got a choice. Um, so uh, we're offering uh, Bondi to Rose Bay, um, which is part of the Bondi to Manly walk. It's relatively uh, straightforward, the first half of that. Um, and once you get up to um, South Head, you start getting a lot of stairs and you go up and down to a number of not really nice little beaches, some of which you may never have been to before. Um, and right from the end at Rose Bay, it's actually only about a 20 minute walk back to the start at Bondi. So you can park at Bondi and loop back to your car quite readily. Um, or um, we'll, we're offering an alternative, which is one we originally had listed um, which is in uh, Springwood in the Blue Mountains um, to go up from, out from uh, Springwood Railway Station to uh, Martin's Lookout, um, almost rainforesty type um, walk for a lot of it. Um, you go way, way down to the water, and then there's a brutal climb up to the to the lookout, um, 
which um, should really give you legs good workout. So you've got a, a couple of choices uh, for the Sunday, depending where you live or, or what you're interested in doing. Um, and we'll have uh, guides to support both of those. So Chris, there's a question on the chat line and absolutely for anybody who doesn't want to talk, feel free to write them in and we'll answer them for you. But Chris, for wet weather gear, do you have any recommendations on brands? No, not particularly. Um, just make sure, as I mentioned, that it's waterproof. Um, there, there is a brand that is Gore-Tex um, that um, a number of manufacturers use. You don't have to get Gore-Tex. Um, it actually uh, costs more sometimes because it's you know because of that brand associated with another brand that adds to the price. Um, just look for stuff that's truly waterproof. Ask the people in the shops that you're buying it from tell them about your event and tell them what you require it for and they'll give you good recommendations chris if needed mate can uh, people make their own way down and back or do you have to go on no, the coach no um so say you um you, you feel like you can't quite make the whole event or something you're, you're part way in and you go Look, you know I'm, I'm just really tired i can't do it one of the guides will go back with you um, so we never leave anyone on their own. Um, sorry, mate. I'm I, sorry. I meant I meant in terms of transport down to Threadburg. Oh, oh sorry. Thing. Yeah, for the event itself. Yeah, if you want to get yourself there, that's not a problem. Just let us know that you're doing that, because um, I, I don't want to have a panic on the day thinking I've left someone behind. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely fine if you want to make your own way there and back. Right. Thanks, um, mate. Yeah. Okay, well, anything else on the chat there, Lauren? Uh, yeah, I've got one more from Chris. He wants to know how many are on this event and how many spaces are left. So I can answer that for you, Chris. So at the moment, we are looking at a reduced capacity. Um, we understand that in New South Wales, the COVID limitations are lesser than those in Melbourne, but we do um, have a responsibility, obviously, to you guys attending and to the staff and the guides attending. So at the moment, we're sitting at about 40 participants, which is a great number for this event. Um, and we'll look at possibly opening up another 15. Yeah. So yeah, just to keep in mind, um, because we're getting close to the event now, if you're looking to um, suggest to someone that they join now, just keep in mind, they need to have a pretty good level of fitness already um, because it, they won't have a lot of time left um, to be able to train up and um, we'll still support them um, but you know that if, if they're not fit enough then they, they're at risk of not being able to com complete the event in time um, so Chris is right there so if anyone does have any concerns around fitness level just touch in with Chris or I um, and we're definitely open to having that conversation with them around sort of what the expectation will be and just making sure that um, they're aware of the health and safety risks that come with that. Yeah, yeah on, on that point, there's that's why we, um, we have the mandatory nature for doing um, some of the training hikes. Um, that is so the guides can assess your ability to um, participate in the event and give you advice. Um, so that, that we kind of like to do that as early as we can. So if, we, if I haven't seen you yet, um, please turn up to something soon. Alternatively, um, share with me um, the kind of walking you're doing via Strava or something like that. I'm, I'm up for um, looking at what you're doing remotely as a way um, to gauge how you're going. Um, if, if I've seen you and I've already talked to you about that, that I think you're um, more than fit enough, that's okay. You don't have to do um, three, but that should only be when I've told you that. Um, if you feel that you are in that place already and I haven't said that to you personally, get in touch and I'll talk to you about that as well. So it sounds like we're 
pretty much getting to time and possibly exhausted the questions so far. Yeah, so um, I've just got one more for you, Chris. Yeah, okay. So Sandra wants to know, Sunday's walk at Springwood will be led by Annette and herself. Yes. Oh, sorry, I think she's just wanting to tell everyone that there's the potential to do three climbs out of the valley to the Lost World, Martin's Lookout, and then back up to Springwood, or there's the possibility to come out early if you can't make it for the entire walk. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it last time I was, at, I was at Mount Martin's Lookout and we were exhausted from that last bit of climbing, and then a woman walked in with a baby and I'm going, how did she carry that baby all this way? And then we realised there's a bit of road right there that, that you can get right to the lookout by just driving to it. So um, that is an easy escape route um, if you are feeling the effects of that walk. Um, yeah, Sandra and I talked about this too. We, it, you know, I think we can just make the call on the day as to how people are feeling if we go a bit further um, or stop early or you know, whichever way that one plays out can be based on on who's there and how you're feeling. Okay, well, this may be the end of questions. Um, obviously, the, the training hikes are a great time to talk to us about what to expect or anything else that comes up in your mind. Um, Lauren is more than ready, willing and able to help you with questions as well. And I know she already has fielded quite a lot. Um, but yeah, get in touch with either of us if you have any other questions or concerns or comments. Um, you know, we, we also like feedback um, on anything we've been doing to date. And we'll certainly ask for feedback after the event as well to help us make it even better next time. Um, I think we're bang on time or just about. So um, I want to thank you all for attending today. And uh, look forward to meeting those of you I haven't yet and seeing more of those that I have met already. Mm -hmm. Have a great evening, everyone. Nice one, Chris. Thanks, Thank Chris. you. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Bye.